You can get a copy of my free ebook Technical Analysis Basics with one click. There is a link in the description box down below. So maybe you're new to technical analysis or you've been using it a while. There's a series of articles in this book that'll get you using some more technical analysis tools pretty much right away. It's written for beginners to intermediate, super easy to use. Hi everybody, this is Lara from pureelliotwave.com. I am going to do something a little bit different with you today. I'm going to have a look at the relationship, so far as I can tell, between the yield curve, periods of recession in the United States, and bear markets in the S&P 500. I've got my data for recessions and the yield curve from Fred. This is the 10-year Treasury constant maturity minus the three-month Treasury constant maturity. And when this blue line it reaches into negative territory, we say the yield curve has inverted. And that usually happens prior to a period of recession. It happened here in the recession from July 1990 through to March 1991. Again, the yield curve inverts prior to recession. Here's the recession. Happens again here, and it comes back into positive prior to recession. Longer recession happens again here, comes back into positive, and then a very short COVID recession. The yield curve is currently inverting, which means we're probably going to enter a period of recession in some months' time. We don't know whether it's going to be a brief recession or a long recession, but it's pretty likely there will be a recession in some months' time. So what does that look like when we put it on a chart of the S&P 500 and try and figure out is there some kind of relationship happening here now to be fair this data set is very small we're only looking at one two three four periods of recession following yield curve inversions because that's the maximum data I can get from Fred so a small data set so let's see what very tentative conclusions we can draw I acknowledge the data set small Here's the first one, yield curve inverts and moves into positive prior to the bear market, which was relatively shallow, just 20% reduction in market value. The bear market bottoms out during the recession. The recession continues after the bear market is over and when price is making new highs. So that's our first data set. Next data set, the yield curve inverts after price has made its final high and started on its way down. Some consolidation, but this is the high back here, the yield curve converted after the bear market began, moves into positive and then the recession begins. The recession was just a short period of time within a longer bear market. The bear market ended after recession. So this one here, the bear market ends before the recession's over and here the bear market ends several months after the recession. This was a serious bear market, a 51% reduction in market value and I've taken that from the starting price, the high, to the lowest close on a daily basis for the bear market. That's how I've calculated that percentage. Next bear market we're looking at here, this is the global financial crisis which began, or the bear market began in October 2007. The yield curve inverts, moves positive, inverts again, and finally moves positive a few months, very short few months before the bear market begins. And then the bear market bottoms out during the recession. The recession continues as the bear market bottomed out. So this one looks more like the early 90s one back here. What about the next example? This is the last one. This is the COVID bear market. The yield curve inverted and moved positive prior to the bear market beginning prior to the high for price and then price moves into a bear market. It was a 34% reduction in market value from the beginning, the high, to the close, the lowest close on a daily basis. The recession ended just a little bit after, ended the month after the bear market ended. So the bear market bottoms out and then the recession ends afterwards. And the recession begins during the bear market. Now this is a strange one, the yield curve has inverted well after the high from price many, many months ago. This is a longer wait, this is a little bit more like this situation here, although not as extreme. This was much closer to the yield curve inverting, closer to the high, but at the moment the yield curve is inverted well within the bear market. 
So that hasn't happened in this very small data set. That hasn't happened like that before. So it'll be same, same, different, posit, 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 I'm so sorry, possibly. There's no recession as yet, but because the yield curve's inverted, I would then be waiting to see Here's the yield curve. I'd be waiting to see the yield curve come back into positive territory and then I would expect to see a bear market pretty soon or maybe a few months after. There could be some delay. Interestingly also, the yield curve is at its lowest point it's been on this chart. This chart goes back to January 1982. That's quite a lot of data. And this is the worst the yield curve has been. So let's have a look at the bond market. I'm going to look at uh, five year, the index for five year, 10 year and 30 year treasury bonds. Let's start with short term, we'll move up to long term. Short term at the monthly chart level, the high was back here in 2006. The bond market has been below those prices since 2006, over a decade. It looks like it may have bottomed out. This looks like a nice V bottom and a swing high within the bear market has been well exceeded. This is a monthly chart with a lot of data. So it looks like the shorter term bond market is on its way up to new highs. Mid term also looks like it's on its way up. This looks like a not as nice a V bottom, but we have this bullish long lower wick. Swing, major swing high within the bond market has been exceeded. And previously, these high prices were back in 2007. So prices are still depressed below what they were in 2007, but definitely on an upward tra trajectory. The upward trend, though, is extreme. RSI has reached overbought, hasn't done that before in this data set, and volatility is increasing as price rises. Now let's look at the longer term, 30-year uh, Treasury bond market. That also looks like it has a strong V bottom, and it looks like it's on its way up. A bullish long lower wick, moving average situation, full bore bullish. An upward trend is not extreme for the longer term. RSI back in neutral territory but hasn't reached oversold previously with this data set and did recent, sorry, overbought, did just recently reach overbought. So that could be considered fairly bearish. It could indicate uh, a bigger pullback to last a few months doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to make new lows though. A decent pullback could bring RSI back into neutral territory and volatility increasing as price rises. So I th my conclusion is this is an unusual situation for the yield curve to invert so late in a bear market. I suspect that we might see the recession coming up sooner rather than later. And when this recession has arrived, I'll then be looking for the end of the bear market to possibly occur within the recession. So no big conclusion about whether or not this bear market has to be has to continue to be much deeper. I think it might be about halfway through if it's going to follow on from a same, same, different kind of a pattern from these previous situations with prior yield curve inversions. I hope that makes sense. I'm sorry I don't have any really strong conclusions. I wanted to find something that looked like a clear pattern. I haven't found it. It's it's not all over the place. The one thing we can be positive of is the yield curve inverts and you can just see it from this data, every time the yield curve inverts shortly after, short, shortly or within a few months, there's a recession. It's happened again here. I will expect it's extremely likely that the US will go into a recession in some months' time. Could be, I would wait for the yield curve to come back into positive territory first though. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know how helpful this has been for anyone. It's not particularly helpful for me. There's a few tentative conclusions there, but not what I was looking for. Thank you for your support.